What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Keyshot tutorial. Let's take a look at Keyshot 11's new 3D paint feature and break down some of the new UI and features tied to it. To get started, you're gonna to wanna to have a part or model selected that you'd like to paint on and make sure that it's open in the material tab of the project panel. From here, you have three ways you can approach applying your 3D paint texture to your model, two of which can be done directly from the material tab. To apply a 3D paint texture directly from the material tab, go to the texture sub tab and either right click on the texture input you'd like to apply your 3D paint to, then select it from the textures flyout, or select the texture input and then use the texture drop down to select it from there. If you're using a version of Keyshot that has access to the material graph, you can also add a 3D paint texture by opening the material graph, right clicking the workspace and selecting 3D paint from the texture flyout there. Now that we've added our 3D paint texture, let's take a look at the UI and get a better idea of how we can use it. With the settings open, you'll essentially have three sections to work from. The main section is your brush settings. From here, you'll be able to toggle paint on and off, preview your brush shape and color, select between three different brush modes, change your brush shape and color, and adjust your brush's size, opacity, and flow. Below that is the additional brush settings accordion where you can adjust spacing and brush angle and you can use the two checkboxes below to confine your brush stroke to either the camera view or the plane you're drawing on. And the last section to work from is the layers accordion. If you're familiar with other creative programs, using layers in Keyshot will feel incredibly familiar. You have your layers list where you can rename layers and adjust their hierarchy, a layer blending mode dropdown that lets you choose between normal, multiply, and overlay blending modes, and lastly, a layer background color window that lets you set the background color of your top layer. It's also important to note here that using the background color is the only way for you to change your material's base color once a 3D paint node is connected. Now that we have an idea of where everything is, let's start 3D painting. If you've noticed so far, I've been working with this 3D paint demo scene, which can be accessed from our welcome window if you want to take a closer look. What I've done to create it is used a mixture of the paintbrush, the stamp tool, and eraser tool to create several layers of rust and corrosion. To get started, I changed my brush color input to a rust texture map that I found online, and I changed my brush shape to a transparent PNG that I created in Illustrator. It's important to note that there are actually two ways you can use your brush color textures with 3D Paint. The first is to simply click the brush color input and select the texture map you want to use. Once the image texture is applied and the paint button is selected, you can now paint directly on your part's surface. With this method, you'll notice that the brush creates a spray paint-like effect using the selected image. Essentially, your brush will spit out many instances of the same image over the path of your brush stroke. The amount of instances is based entirely on your brush's flow rate and your spacing. This can be really useful when you're trying to create custom gradient brushes or you have other unique effects in mind. However, it's not ideal when the goal is to create a discernible one-to-one -one map texture, such as the rust layer I'm trying to add to this barrel. If I want a one-to-one -one effect where I can actually control the scale of the rust texture, I'll need to open my material graph and add my image texture to the 3D paint color input within the graph the way I'm connecting it now. Done this way, you'll be able to adjust your image texture to your desired scale and paint a one-to-one -one representation of the image texture that is attached to the color input. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be working with this second method while adding my rust layer. For this layer, I'm imagining rust forming on the barrel's top near where the pore spouts are located, so I'm gonna start by working on the top surface. Something to note about 3D Paint is it's a very flexible and creative approach to creating surface effects inside of Keyshot. That means there's no definitively right way to approach creating your surface effects. In my case, I like to work with 3D Paint the same way I would render an image digitally by hand. I tend to work with my brush opacity somewhere around 80%. I block my general color and shape in, and then work subtractively by erasing to fine tune the effect I'm working on. This tends to allow for more creativity on the fly, as well as happy accidents that you can incorporate into your images. Your imagination and time are really the only constraints you have when working with 3D paint. In this case, I've started by adding rust to the barrel's top surface. I then imagine rust might form where the container's liquids have dripped down from the pore spouts, and maybe there's also some prominent rust on the extruded rings from where paint has chipped away due to the barrels making contact with each other. 
I then switched to my stamp tool at a low opacity to stamp my rust texture over the entirety of the barrel. And then again, use the eraser tool on low opacity to adjust the prominence of the effect. My goal was to create a subtle rusted tint to the overall barrel before moving on to adding other layers of patina. I'm also going to double check that my 3D paint node is plugged into my bump input so that my rust layers have a little bit more dimensionality to them. Now that I've neatly organized my rust layers and given my barrel a nice first layer of weathering, it's time to add some more material corrosion and bump effects. I'm essentially going to approach this the same way I added the overall rust tint on my last 3D paint node. But in this case, I'm going to work with labels and use the opacity input instead of my color or diffuse inputs. For this layer of weathering, I'm going to use a metal material as my label, and I'm going to attach a 3D paint node directly to the opacity input. I'll then select my brush shape if I need to, and in this case, I will not be using a color texture since I'm going to be painting with my label's material instead. A quick side note about 3D Paint is that you can use 3D Paint to drive any of your material node's inputs, whether it's opacity or roughness, as well as bump and specularity. This gives you an incredible amount of flexibility when creating custom surface effects. In this case, with opacity, you'll notice the entire label material disappears once the node is connected. I can then paint on specific parts of the model where I want to reveal the now hidden label material. Again, I'll use the stamp tool with my opacity adjusted to cover my object surface, and then I'll come back with my eraser tool to knock down areas I feel are too strong or feel patterned. The nice part about painting with my label material instead of a color texture is that I can now go into my label material and adjust its appearance to my liking. In this case, I want the layer to be a similar color to my barrel, and I'm going to adjust the roughness of the material to be a little less reflective. I can then repeat this step as many times as I need to achieve my desired weathering, and I'll also include some bump in there to add a bit more depth to my newly created surface effects. Again, this is both a creative interpretation and entirely subjective, so be sure to experiment and make decisions that reflect your own personal vision. At this point, my barrel looks pretty heavily weathered and it matches my vision for the object and its environment. I'm happy with it and I'm ready to render. Hopefully this quick overview helps you get started with Keyshot's new 3D paint feature and make sure to keep on the lookout for other 3D paint related tutorials to learn specific use cases as well as best practices when working with 3D paint. And as always, if you're interested in more useful Keyshot content, hit that subscribe button and get notified as soon as new videos hit the channel. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this tutorial in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and share.